Right, so hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to get on to the movement for the light gun shooter. Um, there's two ways you can do it. So you could just use the sequencer. Um, there's already videos about how to use a sequencer. Um, you're just moving it like any other object. Um, you know, you'll possess it at the start, which I showed you in the last video, and then bait, yeah, you're just moving it just like any other object you would in the sequencer. So um, you could always just watch a different tutorial about that. Um, this one, I'm going to show you how to use a spline. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a spline, and then we're going to have the camera follow the spline. Um, so this is just going to be movement. I'm not going to do uh, rotation or anything yet. I'm just going to be doing the location. So, uh, first thing is we need to make our spline. So I'm going to make a just an actor blueprint. Call it BP spline. Open it up, and we're going to add a component. And you guessed it. If you didn't guess it, shame on you. We're making a spline. Right, and we don't need anything in it. We just need it. Right. So, we have our spline. So I'm just going to raise it up a bit. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about this, to be honest. Just doing it. Just quick, quick, quick. So if you notice, I was changing the little gizmo between like rotation, scale, and uh, movement. Um, I was just pressing the space bar to do that. Uh, if you don't know the shortcuts, you should learn the shortcuts because it makes your life a lot, a lot easier. You do things a lot quicker. I'm just going to line it up roughly uh, where the kind of camera starts. I mean. When you're actually making your game, you can, you know, be more precise and whatever. I'm just doing it for demonstration. So, you know, it's roughly in the same place. So the camera is basically just going to start here, and it's going to go forward across the spline like that. That's all it's going to do. So now, if I go into the camera pawn, so this is where we're going to handle all our movement. So what we'll do is on begin play. So I'll just make an event begin play. Uh, we want to set the location of the camera to the start of the spline. So that's pretty easy to do. All we have to do is set actor location. Uh, we need a reference to our spline. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have an actor BP spline as a variable, um, and then I'm just going to type in BP spline, and that will get the spline object that we made a minute ago. I'm going to press this little eye icon so it becomes public. When it's public, it means that when I put well, I'll show you in a, in a minute, but when it goes into the editor, I can pick and choose from objects that are in the level. Um, it'll make more sense when uh, you see me do it. So what I'm going to do is pop that in here. I want to get the spline component from the actor. And it's probably actually just going to straight up pop up with what I want, which is this get location at distance along spline and coordinate space I want that to be world and bam that's it so the distance obviously it's going to be zero so it's going to be at the very start of the spline um, and yeah that will, that will do it so that will get the camera sorted out and then uh, to actually move the camera down the spline I'm going to make an event tick So event ticks are pretty good for movement. I wouldn't really, like, if you want anything to move, kind of, uh, I'm just going to copy paste this, just control CV. If you want anything to move smoothly, uh, you'd use the event tick. Um, 
a lot of things don't use the event tick. It's a really common mistake people make, is that they put everything on the event tick, and then your game runs like total garbage. Um, it's quite bad for the performance if you use it too much. Um, you just use it for like, you know, the odd thing, you know, be really cautious about it, use timers instead wherever you can. Um, this isn't a tutorial about timers, but I think I do mention them. I use it in my jump tutorial, um, which you can always look at on my channel. So you jump, it's like a Mario jump. Anyway, so this is how we're going to do the event tick. And this is also a good way actually of using the event tick, so it's not always running. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make an old a gate. And what we're going to do with the gate. So we're going to put the event tick in enter on the, and for the open and close we're going to make two custom events. So add a custom event, we're going to call the first one start and I'm going to make another one and this one we're going to call stop. So essentially how this is going to work is um, when the gate is closed, we're going to be stopped, we're not going to move. When we open the gate using the start uh, event, it's going to open and then we're going to use this bit to move the camera. So let me just move it off a bit out of the way. Now, this is where we get onto the variables. So we are going to make a variable for the distance. So I can just promote to variable like that. I'm just going to click in the top right there so I can change the name. I'm just going to call it distance. If I can remember how to spell distance. There we go. And I'm going to make a. Well, I'm going to set. I need to set the distance. So this bit here, so on the event tick, every frame we're going to be adding to the distance. So you know, we're going to start at 1, and then, you know, plus 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, six, three, like that. And that's how it's going to move uh, smoothly across. So what we need to do is we need to make an add float, so float plus float. Um, so the first one is going to be distance. And then this second one, we're going to promote a variable, and this is going to be our speed. If I can just move that down there, cool. So distance, um, I'm just going to compile it all. So the distance, we just leave it zero because we want it to start um, at zero at the very beginning. And speed, uh, I'm going to leave it at one because when I tested this, it was a good speed for the rate. You want to kind of uh, if you use multiple splines, try to keep the points of the spline at similar distances just so you can have an even speed. Um, I'll show you ways to um, you know, make it go faster or slower. Um, to do stuff like that, I'd, I'll just use trigger boxes, it's really easy. Um, I'll do that in the next video there. So um, that's that, so I'll just leave that there for a second so you can get it in your head and now um, I'm going to move this out of the way so you can't see it. I'm going to go and to um, we want a way to call the start and the stop um, obviously you'll be using sort of in-game events so like you know if all the enemies if you've killed all the enemies in a bit then you you know start it again and um, just for debugging we're just going to use input so um, quickest way to be honest like I would just type I'm gonna use a keyboard I would just type it but if you type in just like one letter like a million things come up so we're just gonna scroll down to keyboard events go S for start call function start This feels really awkward, but it's, it's literally <laughs> quicker than uh, 
I'll show you that if you just type type the thing. No point doing that. If you type an input there, it doesn't really help me much either. So um yeah, you just just do it this way. And we'll go with D because it's right next to it. This is gonna be the stop call function stop. That's how we're going to start and stop it. And um, that's basically it for the blueprints. So what we're going to do is we're going to compile and save, go into my game. Um, now I have the camera pawn highlighted. You'll see on the right, uh, I've got this default bit here. This is my public variables, uh, BP spline. And what I can do is I can click on my arrow and it will show me all of the um, BP spline actors that are like compatible with it, you know. So if I um, if I just duplicate this quick, now I've got two splines. If I click on my camera, scroll down, now you can see I've got two splines here, which I can select from. I'm just gonna get rid of this one. And what you can also do is you got like this little color pick picker thing, and it says pick actor from scene. So I can do that. And then you see when it finds the spline, I can just choose it that way as well. It's a pretty cool way of doing it too. All right, so let's uh, test it out. So if I press play, as you can see, we're not moving. I still got my my shooting. Shooting still works cool. If I press S, oh look at that, it moves. And if I press D, it stops. Sweet. And then. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, next video, I'll show you about like how I use trigger boxes to call different, you know, events and stuff. So like, if I want to rotate the camera to look at something, if I want to change the speed, you know, if I want to just straight up stop the camera, if I want to spawn enemies, uh, we'll go through that in the next video. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys.